Okay, we are back. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back with Billy in the UK. Hello. What's up, Bill? Again. Anxietyunited.com. That's me. Yes. That's this. Not just That's the it. UK, worldwide. Billy's a global com. phenomenon. International. <laughs> Mental health <laughs> knows no boundaries. It doesn't. Billy's a global phenomenon, and we're going to keep it okay. that way. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about the topic. We're up to episode 16, by the way. We're on a roll. Shooting for the stars now. I know, I know. So today we're going to talk about the topic of triggers, anxiety triggers. So uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Gary, who sent me that question about triggers on YouTube, and we decided this would be a good topic to do. So we're going to talk. It's about a good that. one. Yeah. I don't think we. I don't think we've discussed much of the triggers. No, we really haven't. We've talked about symptoms and all that sort of stuff, but we really haven't talked about triggers. So mm. it's a good mm. topic. Triggers is an interesting topic because they're so wide ranging, and I think. They go from the very obvious to the completely surprising. Like, what the hell did that happen? You know, what happened there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I made a I made a list of a few. Okay, cool. Let's start so with we got the got. the ma- the main stuff. You've got your work. You've got your relationships, finances, health, yep. and any long term stress. So they're I mean the main ones, but they cover so many different things that fall within those categories. But then there's like the weird things, or maybe not so weird, but like just thinking about getting older being alone, yep. lack of sleep. A big one for me is hunger, meeting new people, and then even even more, like people might think this is out there, but like hearing sirens, different smells or scents, TV shows, certain things that if they're about hospitals and stuff like that. Uh, being far from home and boredom. That was my list. Boredom. That was my homework. Yeah. Okay. Boredom is a good one, actually. Yeah, yeah. So that's a pretty long list. It was. You know what? I'd probably have the same list. Than you. <laughs> yeah. I most of those things. But there's gonna there's gonna be so many different things. But it, I guess it's just does it really matter what what the triggers are? It's how you respond to the triggers. Yeah, I don't know if it really matters. I think the biggest thing sometimes for me that was hard to deal with a little bit was kind of understanding that almost anything could be a trigger. So I used to be so mm. perplexed. And I know when Gary asked this question, he said, you know, his issue was about what's going on at work for him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's stressful. He's a tough boss, blah, blah, blah. And it's, I guess it's kicking up his anxiety. And then I actually got a question on Facebook this morning about that. Um, somebody had a uh, Cody, somebody had mentioned that he ran into a problem, I think driving home or something where somebody had cut him off. He had a bit of a problem on the road and he got angry about it. And then it kicked off his anxiety. And he was like, is that normal? Is that kind yeah, of normal? Yeah. 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 Mm. And I would think we'd probably both agree that, yeah, the answer is, yeah, that's, and sadly, that's normal. You know? That's it. It's maybe a stress response. It's a response to just something maybe that's not in your control, I guess. Yeah. But then there are things there are, there are things that are in your control. It's just maybe we bury our heads in the sand too much. That's what my old man used to tell me. Oh, that's, that's actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I would agree with that. It's a stress response. So, mm. I remember years ago, and, and you know, I think the answer, the short answer to the trigger thing is just about anything that puts some sort of stress or pressure on us, no matter how mm. big or small, it could be emotional or, or mental or physical stress, could lead to the anxiety response, especially when we're in the thick of it and we're like oversensitized and we, you know, we're a little bit raw. We don't have a lot of mm. resilience. Um, so if you're in the thick of it and you're dealing with anxiety all the time or you're panicking on a daily basis, you have a hard time getting out of the house, whatever that is, I think you're more likely to find more things or triggers. Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I think what winds up happening is, and I actually wrote about this many years ago on Panic Station, I blogged, um, about why stress becomes fear. And yeah. I think that that's one of the big things here on triggers, because if you look around us, all the people around us are stressed and feeling bad and almost mm-hmm. getting cut off on the road and, you know, having to wait on a lo- line that's too long at the motor vehicles department or something. And you could get stressed and maybe upset about it, but it doesn't turn into fear for them. For some yeah, reason. That's, like, yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, for us. And so the trick with the trigger, I think, is how to identify a trigger and try and understand, like, well, a, a stress response is normal. A fear response isn't necessarily normal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and how do we deal with that? Well, I think I made three notes and the, there's three different steps towards or to do with the triggers. And number one is the prevention of triggers. So if it's some, if it is finances or if it is work, and these are things that you can actually do something about. Okay. So, you know, you could look for another job if it's that bad or you could 
check your finances, get them in order, stop ordering those bloody takeaways. Okay. There's, if there's something that you can do about it, then do your best to do it. And then the, the other step being trigger desensitization. Mm -hmm. So maybe with the exposure stuff, so you can actually put your, if it's being alone at home, yeah. then put yourself in that situation. If that's the trigger, then try to obviously desensitize. And then the other one is to just acknowledge if there's nothing that you can do, if there's some, if it's something that you can't prevent, if it's something that maybe you can't put yourself into desensitize, then just acknowledge that whatever it is that's triggering, that's the reason that you're feeling anxiety after it. So once you actually start to recognize that, okay, there is a reason for this fear or this anxiety now, then maybe it helps you just learn that, I guess, the more that, or you're in no danger, as right. we've said a million times, right. you know, the more that you do have to face that trigger, the less that you will react, hopefully. Yeah, that, those are all really good points. You're probably right. So you could you can desensitize and do a little bit of exposure on some of your triggers, but mm. I think I think a lot of it has to do with just recognizing that it's normal for me to be upset about something. Mm. You know, if, if you make a mistake at work and you get called on the carpet for it, and you know that's stressful. Mm. It's it's normal, and, and I think we make the mistake of trying to get into the situation where I want to have no anxiety, no stress. That'll be the solution here, and that's that's just not normal. If you're alive, you're going to feel stressed sometimes. We we spoke about this a long time ago, triggers and stuff. And I remember actually saying back to you, like this was probably five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I was saying that maybe for me, the anxiety is sort of a distraction from the stress. So if I've got financial troubles or if something's really bothering me, then I'll feel more anxious. And maybe that's like just my mind's way of telling me, let's not think about the bills Let's think about how you're feeling right now. Yeah. I don't know whether there's maybe other people that could relate to that. Huh. That's an interesting perspective on that. Mm. Anxiety becomes a shield or yeah, yeah. against the stress and stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a protection mechanism, but it's not protecting me. It's making me feel worse. Right. <laughs> I'd rather, <laughs> right, exactly. I'd rather pay the bills. Thing and throw a worse thing in front of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that makes some sort of sense. And sometimes those yeah, things yeah. happen, we don't even know it. Right? Mm. We don't even know mm. what's happening. So. That's that's interesting because sometimes then, especially if you're still in that situation where you're going to sort of wrap yourself in your anxiety and use it as a, like, you know, well, I can't do that. I can't deal with that now because of my anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Then you kind of are protected. Like that, that situation mm. is pushed off. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Mm. Um, I, I, and I think, huh, that's actually really good. That's a lot of good insight right there. Well yes. done. Well done. <laughs> is that it? Are we so, done? <laughs> That's it. We're done. You, you answered it right there. We're six minutes in where it's all over. Um, again. 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 You, you blew the lid right off it. So I think when people – I think the question that Gary was asking and, and that Cody asked me also was like, is this normal? I think, is, is it normal to feel that way? And yes, it is normal to feel that way. It's just – I think it, it will get better. You know, as you start to make forward progress and you're working on this, you're doing your exposure, mm -hmm. you're working on your coping skills and, you know – you're feeling more in control of your anxiety or not afraid of the anxiety, I think mm -hmm. the fear response to those other things also goes away too. Yeah, yeah. So I could say that I shared a lot of your triggers back then. And like, what are my triggers now? Let me think about that. Most of my triggers now are, I think when I'm really sleep deprived and I don't sleep a lot as it is, but yeah. really run down, I'm much more likely to have an anxious day. For mm -hmm. sure. Um, when I am, which is okay, so I'm tired. Why does tired equal anxious? I, I still don't know. Yeah, it's a strange, it's strange. It's, yeah. Or um, it's we can go back a couple episodes. Like I was mentioning before we went live here, my ears are plugged up again. So I had a sinus infection that's gone, but my stupid ears are plugged up again, and that can contribute to feeling a little bit unsteady because of the fluid in your ears. Mm -hmm. That adds anxiety for me. So it's it's strange and. There's probably another 50 people in a 10 mile radius that have plugged up ears right now. They're not feeling anxious about it. Mm, mm. You know, it's weird, isn't it? It's frustrating. I don't like it. It's ang I'm angry, but well, I was I was saying before we went live that I had a real odd day a couple of days ago. I just I woke up in the morning and as soon as I opened my eyes, I just felt this uneasy, like a flustery feeling. I I know exactly why it happened now, but the trigger was was that I'd forgot to take my Propranolol, which is a medication, but we're not doing medication today. But I forgot to take it the night before. So whether it actually 
made me feel physically different, I don't know, or whether it was like a mental thing, but as soon as I woke up, I just thought to myself, dang, I forgot my meds. I don't know whether they help, that's another topic for another day, but it was just that immediate response, and then for the whole day, like I got up, I had the pill, it made no difference to how I felt at the time. Right. You know, it's not that fast acting, you don't neck it and you feel great. Yeah. But for the rest of the day, I just felt on edge, I felt uneasy. Just as if like there was panic just around the corner and I couldn't shake it, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't actually reach panic. It didn't escalate that far. So I don't know whether anything I did, right. but that was a, tr- a trigger for me was just forgetting to take the bloody medication, even though it wasn't something that I'd really thought about. Right. It was just that that feeling that I had, whether it was because I hadn't or because my mind was thinking you didn't and it just played on me. That's interesting. And so yeah. did, did you think about the meds first? I forgot my meds and then you felt anxious or did you wake up feeling anxious and then remember you forgot your meds? I honestly can't remember what order. I honestly don't know. Happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was that. It was just maybe the – because it does. It's the blink of an eye and it's what comes first, the thought or the feeling. I honestly don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's one way. Sometimes it's the other. I don't know. So what do we do about these triggers? I think the advice on how to deal with triggers is the same as every other bit of advice that we offer. Mm, mm. Uh, so the trigger is just, okay, it's what may lead you down that path. That's fine. So uh, really, it's the same advice as the anxiety that comes you know, out of the blue. People say, it came out of the blue. It came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, whether it comes out of nowhere or it comes because of something. You got a notice in the mail. You have an overdue bill or something. You're having money troubles. Whatever it is. You had a fight with your wife or mm-hmm. – you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. In the end, you still have to deal with it the same exact way. And exactly. Right. What a lot of people wind up doing, I think, is they start to avoid the triggers. Yeah. And so triggers becomes part and parcel of what turns anxiety into an anxiety disorder because when you start to avoid your triggers, if your mm-hmm. triggers are driving, then you stop driving. If your trigger yeah. is being at work, then you, you quit your job. If your trigger is being mm-hmm. at school, you stop going to school. And mm. that is when it becomes lifestyle altering, like we talked about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's difficult. So you have to deal with, regardless of the source of the anxiety, whether it's one of your triggers that you're aware of, or it just just seems to be in the background or comes out of the blue, the response is the same. Would we say that, like, because there's going to be people maybe watching this now or listening and and thinking that they just feel anxious all the time. Mm -hmm. So, like, how can there be a 24-7 trigger? But my response to that would be that they're perhaps just, like, oversensitized. Yes. So perhaps those triggers have put you in this place your body's oversensitized your mind doesn't stop so that would explain why you feel like that I think most true. of the time yeah and i think what winds up happening i think i have a blog post on my site about this too about triggers um as we go further into it you know you and you're having anxiety issues and they're getting worse if you feel like you're on a downward slide and they're getting worse and your world is getting smaller you just start to accumulate triggers your bag of triggers gets more and more full Hmm. Like everything starts to become a trigger after. A yeah, yeah. So when everything is a trigger, in a way, the the ultimate trigger is your anxiety itself triggers yeah. more anxiety. Mm-hmm. So you, you quickly go down that slope where like driving is a trigger, the phone being on the phone is a trigger, watching the news is a trigger, going yeah. on Facebook is a trigger. Like everything becomes a trigger, and then yeah. then your anxiety itself feeds itself, and, and that becomes your own trigger. Mm, as mm. crazy as it sounds. And I think yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so when somebody feels like, well, I'm just anxious 24-7, I don't have a trigger. Yeah, well, the fact that you're noticing that you're anxious 24-7 tells me that it the anxiety is, is That is the trigger. Is the yeah. trigger for more anxiety. It's, mm. it feels I think that's, that's probably where I go from. I go between that and having actual triggers right. and then triggering myself. That's where I feel like I get to. I think I've only ever been out of that once, and that was like probably four or five years ago, maybe more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny because the and the word triggers appears to be everywhere now too. Triggered. triggered. Yeah, yeah. Tri- like mm. kids were making jokes about being triggered mm-hmm. the other day. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I did the I did a video on yeah, yeah did you people being on triggered. <laughs> yeah, people being triggered by them uh, nutters. The sweets called nutters. Uh, <sighs> yeah, triggered. and I'm not even sure what what we're talking. About. It, it's just a commentary, and I guess what's going on in the media right now. But here, well. They're, they're, everybody's triggered by everything our president says. Like, I know he's a character, but it's just 
Like what is triggered? It is. It's everywhere. Yeah. What is triggered? People are triggered. Your, your anger is triggered. Your sense of disenfranchisement is triggered. Your anxiety is triggered. And it leads that the use of the word trigger, I think, is part of, you know, we talked about anxiety sort of in the mainstream and how it may be, yeah, yeah. Media may be watering it down. So mm. there was an article that I saw yesterday in the New York Times that one of my Facebook friends posted. First of all, it was a marathon article. It took me five minutes to read it. I mean, who reads five minute newspaper articles? You got too much time in your generation, man. <laughs> no, that's crazy. So, uh, but it was about the prevalence or the increased prevalence of anxiety among American teenagers, mm -hmm. and it talked about it was a, a fairly decent discussion about triggers and how everything, anything negative for these kids yeah. appears to trigger anxiety. So, I think the point is that for our discussion, it's super easy to become so sensitized that just everything you see. When I was at my worst, I couldn't watch the news. I could mm -hmm. not watch the news. Like, oh, there was a, you know, a flood in the Philippines. It would, like, yeah. throw it over the edge. It was, yeah. It was bad news. It was actually literally bad news. I will just say, I used to watch, I used to watch Alex Jones to fall asleep. I don't know if... <laughs> Alex Jones, the InfoWars <laughs> guy, right? Yeah. He's crazy, that guy. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like watching news, don't watch that. Don't watch Alex... Yeah, he's... I've, I've seen snippets of him here and there. He's a total oh, conspiracy dear. theorist guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's got to be exciting. That's it's be, fun. Be it's fun. Anxiety. Keeps you busy. Yeah, keeps your mind busy. We're not recommending Alex Jones, by the way. No. And I'm going to go on a limb here. If you're watching Alex Jones and you think he's right, probably stop watching because you might not be smart yeah. enough to understand what we're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying it's never, it's never going to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that, maybe we should edit that out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. What the hell, right? Who needs yeah. subscribers and viewers? Let's ruffle some feathers. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, that's triggers. Yes, everything can become a trigger. How do you stop it? So, how do we eliminate triggers? What do we do to make the list smaller instead of bigger? So, obviously, the things that you can control, take control. Or if you can pass it off and let somebody else control it, then let them. You know, because some people do try and take on too much. Like, because perfectionism, that's a common trait of people that suffer with anxiety. You know, they never feel good enough or, you know, what they're doing is not good enough. But if you can share the jobs, share the jobs. Yeah. And take control of the things that you can. And the things that you can't, just, you know, there ain't no point in worry about, worrying about those. That's the thing. Yes, I think that's true. I would probably add to that that the way to, to make your trigger list smaller is to just get better in general. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've discussed that many times, haven't we, recent, you know, healthy eating, yeah. exercise, yeah. something that I just am useless with, sticking to these routines. Although, I will add, I am still off the caffeine. Nice. Good job. And I feel no symptoms, no weird weaknesses or headaches or nothing like that, so... It's got to be a positive. Yeah. That's but then I, I was, I was sitting like we were, me and my wife were making tea the other day, British tea, and I was just saying to her like, should I, should I have a caffeine one because I feel a bit edgy? Maybe I just need a caffeine kick. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, well, that, there's no positive from caffeine. There's nothing. There's no reason that my body is needs a bit of caffeine. No. You know what I mean? So it's like it's not as if it's like a vitamin de deficiency. Yeah, you're caffeine I'm not, deficient. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I just thought to myself, no, let's just carry on. Yeah. Stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it had to work out fine, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's all good. Still there. Well, that's good. I think the, the other thing, so yes, eating healthy and exercise and all the things that we've been talking about, doing your exposure, not backing down, learning to relax, all of these things. And mm -hmm. triggers are just like any other facet of anxiety. It, if you think it's a trigger, you're going to have to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that you should immerse yourself into every trigger at the same time, but you can use them as points for exposure work also. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you're triggered by watching the news, and many people are, watch a couple of minutes. You know, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you can you can get over them that way too. But I think what you find is if you naturally start working toward making forward progress overall, the list of triggers will get smaller. They mm -hmm. still might stress mm -hmm. you out. If somebody cuts me off on the road, I mean, I'm still pounding on the steering wheel and saying bad words and yelling mm -hmm. at them. That's just yeah, yeah. But yeah. It doesn't lead to, you know, oh my God, now I'm having anxiety. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just angry and then it's over. And, and you'll get mm -hmm. back to that normal state where you might be stressed out, but it doesn't turn into the fear. 
I was just going to want to mention, you just reminded me, like, another trigger maybe could actually be, like, excitement, because that can actually trigger people's anxiety, because the yes. the feelings and the emotions are so similar, aren't they? That's the... Yes. Like, when people get excited, imagine if you won the lottery right now, you would probably feel exactly the same as you would mid-panic. Same chemicals, same adrenaline. That is very true. Mm. And I've heard many people say that what has helped them is to remember that. Like when I'm feeling panicky and anxious, well, this is the same way I might feel if I just got news that I won the lottery or, I, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's mm. true. The physical sensations are the same. So there mm. can be positive triggers too. Mm. Mm. You know, I've seen that. I've actually, you know, when I was at my worst, there were times when even really happy things like would put me over the top and suddenly yeah, yeah. having a freaking panic attack. I was just having this great time. So mm. that's a really positive – that's a good point. Triggers aren't always negative things. Even positive things could could lead to that. I notice because, like, I'm a massive UFC fan. So yeah. we're, we're bringing so many different angles in here today. Right. But, yeah. but, like, when I'm watching, like, a main event, if it's something I'm really hyped for, then I usually get up. I don't sit on the sofa to watch it. I stand behind the sofa because I am so – like the energy that I've gotten, like it, it feels, I feel really nervous about it yeah. and it feels like anxiety, but I know I'm able to make that distinction that I know sure. that I'm excited. Yeah. It's weird. Whereas if there was nothing on TV and I was feeling like that standing there, I'd start questioning it's what's going on. It's, context. Yeah, yeah. it's all in the context. Yeah. And so that's yeah, another yeah. good way to think of triggers. Like, Oh my, you know, my boss just yelled at me like, well, mm. okay, but it, you know, take it out of the, it, it is all in the context. Like those same feelings could happen, like you said, in a positive environment. So maybe sometimes mm. flip it. I used to have to do that yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, like, all right, I, if I was watching, I do the same thing with, with well, I'm not, not so much these days, but it's a huge hockey, ice hockey fan, mm -hmm. you know, and I can remember our and American football at the New York Giants. And when they won their last two Super Bowls, they were nail biters. And I remember like pacing yeah. around watching mm. the game, just, just like, oh, just let it be over, 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 same exact feeling as if yeah, I was mad. Yeah. yeah. Except it was fun. So strange. Strange that we can, our minds don't even, like, it's, it's odd. It's all in the interpretation. So yeah, much yeah. of it is in the interpretation, not the sensation or the thought or the feeling, but the interpretation. Yeah, yeah. So much. Too. Of it. So, so there. So that's triggers. We've done 20 we nailed them. On triggers, I think so. If anybody has questions, boy, I'll keep them coming, I guess. Do you want to take some questions that we've seen? I've got, we've got, a, we've got a few questions. Sure. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, question number one was from Olivia, and it was to me. Did I ever get to go bowling? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, that's really no, good. No, I didn't. And we still talk about it, and we still say, yeah, we need to go and do that, but I haven't. It's bad. I'm going to use my phone to look at my questions, so apologies for that. <laughs> that's all right. Olivia, so, no. The bowling. you got to get no bowling, bowling. Dude. You have to bring a camera. Know. At least, at least we have to show a picture. If there's no video, I, no. If I do go, there will be footage. Yeah, be video. There will be footage. But I haven't done anything to be honest. I mean, since I did the last uh, exposure video where I went for breakfast, I've barely been out. Yeah. It's been weird. It's been a real. I don't know. I just haven't felt too sharp. I feel a bit low mood. Hmm. It's normal. I'm not questioning it. Fine. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I had yeah here's it. Okay, you first, go on. Then I'll do no, it. you. Okay, go on. So I had one from, from Ronald. How's it going, Ron? Um, he asked me on Saturday, uh, I have one last question regarding recovery. Did you wake up one morning and you just had no symptoms or was it more gradual and gradual over time? And the answer to that is absolutely was gradual. Mm -hmm. was, I didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, no more anxiety. What I found was I would wake up and mornings were really difficult for me. I would have a hard yeah. time staying asleep. I'd wind up waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep. And I would just lay there and just marinate in anxiety. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I found is the first sign that things were getting better for me was I wouldn't wake up at three o'clock in the morning. I'd wake up a little later and a little later yeah. and a little later. And when I woke up, I didn't feel that or when I would feel the horrible morning anxiety, as soon as I opened my eyes, I would be able to say, you know what? By noon, this is going to be better. Yeah. And then it would be better by noon. And then my morning anxiety starts to go away. It was a gradual thing over time. It wasn't like, I'm cured. You know? Yeah. yeah. Happen. I wish it did, but that didn't happen. Yeah. So it's incidentally like the same kind of thing happened for me, but to go the other way, when I was feeling better, 
to actually go back downhill was a lot quicker <laughs> than uh, getting up the hill in the first place. You know what? That's a good point. And mm. it's just the way it is. I, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of feel like we got gypped a little bit <laughs> in terms mm. of like how our mm. brains work for the factory. Yeah. You can learn, you know, and I've used the, the, the example of like being afraid of dogs, for instance. You can learn to be afraid of dogs in three minutes. If a dog bites yeah. you, bam, you have a phobia yeah. of dogs. Very yeah. possible. But it could take you three weeks or three months to mm -hmm. back out of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's not fair. Mm. But. So, yeah. Sorry. You want to grab it? Yes. Uh, this is from Crav163. How do you get to not care when going out is so traumatic? That was the basic gist of the question. So how do you reach that point where you just don't care how you feel anymore? You know, whether, whether panic comes or not. Okay, that's a reasonable question. Um, I'll, I'll start that one. Go on. The first thing you do is stop talking about how traumatic it is. Mm -hmm. And I said this to someone else in a, a Facebook discussion too last week. The, the very first thing you have to do is stop talking mm -hmm. about how traumatic it is. That's a, that's a judgment. It's an yeah. interpretation. It's a, it has negative connotation. It's not traumatic. I feel, so when you go out the door and you feel badly, the statement is, well, I, I feel like crap. This sucks. Mm -hmm. I hate this. I feel badly. That's it. Done. That's the interpretation. That's the acknowledgement of it. It's not traumatic. It's not horrible. It's not crippling. It's not awful. Stop. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to stop doing that, I think, first. And that's the first step in not caring. So when you're already convinced that going out is traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> just a parking spot behind me. <laughs> um, when, you, when you're convinced that going out is traumatic, that's a, a horrible negative judgment, then it becomes hard not to care about that because nobody wants to be traumatized. Yeah, yeah. It almost sets you up, doesn't it? It, it sets you up with that it does set painting you up. that negative picture. And, yeah. and sadly, the, then the real, the major way that you get to not care is to do it anyway. So yeah. call it traumatic, if you will, and then do it anyway. Unfortunately, mm. I don't have a better answer than that. Sooner or later, yeah. you have to just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to do that, then it will continue to be traumatic and you'll always care how you feel. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, I think it's traumatic. It's traumatic. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to minimize that. So no, no, I understand. You're, you're angry no, at me and like, oh, exactly. I don't remember. No. Like, I, I remember when it felt like the end of the world. But of course you do. Of course I do. But... <laughs> But sooner or later, the only way to not care is to start doing it anyway and, mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. really do it the, and the right way, not white knuckling, relaxing, all the things we talked about. And then suddenly you discover, like, this isn't hurting me. And there's probably evidence that we've all got, like, everybody that's watching this has had times where they've achieved and they felt good about themselves and felt a progress. Right. So exactly what you're saying is true. It's just that maybe we stumbled or there was a setback or yeah. we stopped pushing ourselves and that's why we go back down that path. That's what I do. Whereas you continued on the path. Well, I think sooner or later, what it comes down to is, you know, I'm going to use a ridiculous sexist term, but sooner or later you man up and you just keep doing it mm -hmm. and you build on that victory. Like, wow, that felt so good. I'm going to do it again right now. So the mm -hmm. best advice I could give, you want to get to the point where you don't care how you feel. Just keep doing it over and over and over immediately, one right after another. So when you have mm -hmm. a victory, build on it immediately. Right that minute, go out the door again. Don't come back, sit on the sofa, and pat yourself on the back about how good it feels. That's good for five mm. minutes. And get dressed and get back out the door again for another five minutes. And then you will just, you will learn not to care how you feel. <laughs> you make me feel bad. I, I don't need to make you. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I'm not trying to make no, you. No, no. But, but you can It's what that. people need. It's what you need to hear. Yeah. It's what you need to. Well, it's not really what you need to hear. It's what you need to freaking do it's what you at the end of the day. That's exactly yeah. right. And sometimes mm. we get stuck. And I was stuck there before I started making my progress. And mm. like, yeah, I know I have to do this. I know I have to do this. I know I have to do this. In fact, I was on um, like at the stupid new webcam. I went on Facebook Live like, Friday night just to play with it. And I had a couple of people ask seen it. and somebody asked, like, you know, what, and I said, they said, well, what was the turning point? I said, well, I just started doing things different. Well, what did you do different? Well, really nothing. I just did the things that I knew I had to do. Mm -hmm. So in the end, yeah, yeah, that's how you learn not to care how you feel. If you remember, I don't know if you will remember this, but when we did the podcast years and years ago, I said I was going to try the yes man thing. Do you remember that? You haven't seen the movie, the Jim Carrey movie, I've yes man. I have seen yes man, no. Talk where he he sort he gets dragged into this cult sort of thing where people are only allowed to say yes. So whatever anybody asks, 
the answer has to be yes. Yeah. And if you remember, like, years and years ago, I started doing that. And just, like, my daughter was asking if I'd go to Viking Day at her school. I this Yeah, yeah, when I said, immediately I just said yes, yes. to her. Because yeah. we'd, re- we'd reached a point where she was no longer asking me to go and do stuff because she knew that I was always going to say no. Yeah. So she, you know, yeah. she'd ask her mom or she'd ask my dad or whatever. And then one day she just asked me and I just said, I made a decision. Yes, man, let's do this. And then I just, I just used it. I felt like crap at the end of like a couple of weeks of doing it, but that's because I was so sensitized. But if I'd have continued, right. I probably wouldn't be sitting here doing this now because I'd be, I don't know. Yeah. On the moon. And you would be also exhausted. It's hard work. You will feel very tired and worn out and that sort of stuff. And I think have, that's what stops people. There too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. And you have to use your best judgment. Like when you're working hard at that, it's exhausting. I, there's no doubt about that. So you got to build in some downtime and some rest time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, I know that was a rambling. Yes, man. Answer to that question, but I like that. Just do that. That's yeah. your. That's your, the project for the week for the viewers is to. Just say yes. Yeah. Just say yes. Well, within reason. Don't go breaking the law and stuff. <laughs> you know. Who wants to rob a bank? Yeah, I'm yeah. in. Yes. I'm in. <laughs> you know. Do you have any others? Let's have a look. It was a really long one. Which I don't know whether I can be bothered to read out, <laughs> which is so bad. <laughs> um. Wow. This one's from Sarah Bishop. Um, She has a terrible cold or a cough for a month. She's been to the doctor, has no chest infection, so no medication. However, it's made anxiety more difficult to deal with because they're feeling genuinely ill, but constantly questioning whether the symptoms are the illness or anxiety, and it's exhausting. So we're up. This was a question from the health anxiety one. Right. So it's, you know, it's it's all about just accepting that this is a cold or whatever it is, then it is just that. And that's it. Yeah. And yeah, in a way that we talked about that in the, in that episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no other way to, to go about it's so it. So difficult. It's all mental. It's all mental. And just maybe accept that you will feel more exhausted anyway, because you run down. So your body's working harder to, to fight whatever infection you've got. So yeah. maybe, you know, take a bit of rest, but just accept that it's a cold yeah, and probably. time, allow time to pass in it. I mean, look, two weeks ago, I was sniffling and freaking about, is this something worse than a cold? Right. Why do I feel so tired? Look at me now. Oh, Oof. A horse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Out there so, yeah. Ass and taking names. Oh, yeah. That's great. Um, I'm about out. I don't really have, I have a couple, but we'll talk about them off the air and probably turn them into actual topics for episodes. Okay. Okay. So have you got any more you want to throw out there? Um, I have got one other one. I'm just reading through it. Okay. You can sing for a minute. Yes. That's what everybody wants me to do. Yep. Don't I sound like I'd have a good singing voice, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, nobody wants me to sing. Trust me. No. So this one was basically, it's from Ruth, and she was talking about symptoms and restless emotions, racing thoughts, but the physical physical symptoms continue, um, feeling like she was going to pass out, severe headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, tingling. Mm-hmm. There are times when she feels like she's really going to black out. It happens at stores while driving, while walking. What's the explanation for this? And why can't she get a handle on the physical symptoms? So we're back. But she's on Zoloft yep. and Valium right. and want, wants to avoid going to the ER. Sure. Well, <clears throat> the first thing is it feels like I'm going to pass out. It's the key word. Feels like. Words. So the question is, have you ever actually passed out? And the answer mm. is probably no. Um. It feels like I'm going to fall over because I'm dizzy. Have you ever actually fallen over and not been able to get up? The answer is probably no. I've, I've been there. You've been there. I, I think not being able to get a handle on the physical sensations is 
is an indicator that you still haven't really accepted them as as yeah. homeless. Yeah. I don't know if you would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, or expecting them to go away. They only, you know, it's the same thing as anything else. They only go away when you stop caring about them. And mm. if you're fo- still focused on how you're feeling and engaging in an inner dialogue with yourself about how you feel, is this okay? Is that okay? Is this, does this hurt more? Does that hurt more? Do I feel like I'm going to pass out? Do I feel like this? Do I feel like I'm having a heart attack? If you're still engaging in that inner dialogue and focusing on how you feel, then you probably haven't fully accepted that that you're okay. Yeah, yeah, because the way that you – it's the cycle, isn't it? If you you have that sensation and it makes you feel anxious, then you're likely to have either that sensation or another one right. because of the physical effects of the anxiety, so sure. the, the chemicals that are running through your body. It's, like it's going to make something else, right. and then you're going to freak out about that. And then you're going to feel anxious, and then you're going to do it again, and that's why it's called the fear cycle, isn't it? And, I mean, sometimes we forget anxiety is a physiological state. It is a physical mm. state of being. Yeah, so yeah. You have an increased level of adrenaline in your bloodstream, and that comes with all kinds of effects. And dizziness is one of them, and shaky legs is one of them, and the rapid heart rate is one of them. And I think we should perhaps maybe do an episode where we talk about maybe like we know why the symptoms happen, but just go through the symptoms just so people can. Yeah. Maybe we do something, it maybe will help people just understand that they're normal, right. normal reactions to the stress, to the anxiety, you know. I would, we should, that, we should do that. That would be a good way. To it's just it. But the, there is a condition to us doing that video is that you watch that and then you never watch another freaking symptom video <laughs> or post in another forum about a symptom. Yeah. That, has ever. anybody ever felt? Has anybody ever yes. felt? We could do a whole episode just on seeking reassurance. Well, I'm going to do a video on um, Facebook groups. Yeah. We've mentioned this before, but yeah. there's so many negative. But just one thing I'm just going to mention, there was a question, and it's made me, it's reignited the fire in me to do the Facebook group video. Yeah. Yeah. And the question was, it had, you know, when you get the nice backgrounds on the Facebook things so you can put all lovely gradients, oh, yeah. what, it, what is the best way to commit suicide? That was the question. And I'm like, oh, my days. Holy cow seriously yeah that was the question big bold letters yeah. in a group with like 40 odd thousand members what is the best way to commit suicide but my, i didn't respond on that but i was thinking like well the people that did the best way are probably dead by now anyway so they're not going to be able to answer and by yeah by best what did they actually mean like what's the most enjoyable way right, right. that's what i just couldn't get my head around why somebody would think that, that was any way appropriate to post in a group of anxiety yeah. just oh. bizarre the there was another one there was another one saying um is anybody else having problems with ee because i can't make calls on my phone <laughs> that was another one <laughs> in an anxiety group I'm like, i think you know what though that's interesting we'll definitely talk about that we have got to do a couple episodes that social you know f- focus on social media <laughs> yeah yeah stuff. i've seen that and i think sometimes it's because there a few of the groups that i am an admin on and things i think people get so comfortable in those groups they yeah. become their friends and their support system, but they just go there for anything. Mm, like, it seemed that way. I'm making a souffle. How long do I keep it in the oven? <laughs> <laughs> and it's always strange because as an admin, there have been times where we've had to like put our heads together with the other admins and say, is this, we, we can't really allow this because it yeah, pushes yeah. real things down past the fold. And yeah, yeah. You know, it's tough, but I get that. I'm going to oh, just a real quick one for that to follow up on that last question. Right now, even as we're doing this podcast, I mentioned before that my ears are plugged up. So yes. my ears are sloshing around. You see me come and hold my nose and do the clearing my ears thing a little bit. During this yep. thing. So right now I am actually feeling a little bit dizzy because of the fluid in my ears. Mm-hmm. But So I'm feeling dizzy. Oh, is that it? So the is point that is, it? the point is, that does trigger a little bit of anxiety. So if I have to measure my anxiety level from a scale of one, what, zero to 10, I would say I'm a two right now. Not right. zero. And I'm a two because I'm feeling a little bit dizzy. So when I move mm-hmm. my head or move my, you know, I'm, I'm feeling, yeah, yeah. it takes me a second to get that oriented back. Mm-hmm. I probably feel the same way as the person who asked you the question about not getting a hold on physical symptoms. You know, yeah, yeah. A little unsteady, yeah. It feels like I'm going to fall over. The room spins for just a half, a half a second or so and then it stops. What's the difference between the fact that I'm standing here calmly talking to you in a podcast feeling mm-hmm. that way and, mm-hmm. or feeling that way and, you know, trying to do something about it. 
or yeah, reacting yeah. to it in fear. So well, that's the difference. You're not reaching for water or mints or right calling a friend or reacting to yeah. So the best the advice I'm going to offer on that: How do you get past the physical symptoms? Acknowledge it. Yes, I feel dizzy, and I'm just going to slowly and deliberately keep doing what it is I'm doing. If I'm walking mm-hmm. down the street, I'm just going to keep walking down the street because I felt that way a thousand times. I've never fallen over. I've never passed out. I'm just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it slowly and deliberately, and I'm going to be soft in the face of that symptom, not hard. So yeah, I'm not going to fight it or brace or anything. I'm just I'm going to relax into that and just just mm-hmm. slowly and deliberately go about what I'm doing. So. Practically, that's the best advice I can offer on how can I get a hold of my physical symptoms. Let them be Sounds there. Just keep doing what you want to do anyway. That's it. So there you go. What else we got? I'm done with questions, mate. 45 minutes. I think we're done for this week. I wonder, like, have we looked at our stats? Do people watch the whole videos? I, think, I know. I've, I don't look. Yeah, I never watch to see if people go the whole way. We've got, these are I know longer one, and longer as we go. I know one person who watches them all. <laughs> Me. <laughs> that's, that's I always crazy. watch so whenever, you back. Whenever I send you the video, like you watch it back. <laughs> yeah. I almost never watch us. I don't know why. I have to. I have to. Just in case. Critique, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, Billy also makes the thumbnails for these, so you have to find that perfect thumbnail. Maybe that's, you know, yeah, I'll give you one. You, I don't know if you like it. Do it again and I'll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, okay, I guess yeah. we're done. So next week we'll be back again with another one. The way we're doing yes. this, just so people know, we we're, it's Thursday morning right now. We record on a Thursday morning or Thursday morning in the U.S. Thursday afternoon for Billy. Yes. So we record on Thursdays and we seem to publish on Tuesdays. So mm-hmm. it's good. It gives you a couple of days to, if you've got any questions that you want answering next week, you can post them on this video. It'll give us a couple of days to yeah drum up some answers exactly, and then answer them in the next video. So also the well. the uh, I know we've just slated Facebook groups, but your group is not oh. one of those. It's a it's a good one. How, yeah. how do we find it? Okay, so it is. I will post it in the video description. I I don't know the I don't remember the URL. It's one of those crazy Facebook okay. URLs. But if you go to facebookcom slash guy, I think there's a link to the group right there. And there's maybe 50 people or so. Um, but I'll put it in the video description on this one too. Sounds good. So if you want, also, everybody's it, welcome. Just something for me personally. It's not a plug at all. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I was going to say like if somebody else is doing youtube videos if they're doing exposure therapy anything like that then i always like sitting and having a look you know watching other people progress and stuff so if anybody wants to share a channel link in the comments or anything like that don't be afraid we're not going to remove your comment if you want to share a channel do i'm with you on that you know so we can just have a look and maybe you know if people want to bounce ideas let's do it yeah yeah i'm good i'm totally good with that too yeah Mm -hmm. billy's Mm -hmm. channel my channel wherever it's all good yeah yeah huge fan of success stories giant yeah yeah so even and i I don't mean like hey i'm cured anything like hey today i made it to you know school yeah yeah or whatever i pick my kid up off the bus share it those those are great i think some of the best things that we could do online and i think you and i would both agree one of the things we're trying to accomplish here is if we could build a community around this these videos and podcasts it would be Mm -hmm. one of encouragement and inspiration positivity yeah definitely leading for each other as opposed Mm -hmm. to just comparing symptoms and you know, wallowing in it. So 100%. Yeah. Bring it. All right. Anxietyunited.com to find Billy, of course, as always that anxietyguy.com to find me that anxiety guy on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff. Keep the questions and comments coming. They're getting good. We're getting there. Yeah. I like it. So we're building up some speed here. We totally are (laughs) building up some speed. It's been good. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys next week. We're out.